Shalom, and welcome to another installment of Apostle GMS giving all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Um, we're in um, yeah, the name of the book is The Mark of the Beast is the Chip, and we're going to continue from uh, chapter 4. And what's the title of chapter 4? Uh, the Mark in the Worldwide Plan. The Mark in the Worldwide Plan. And remember, this book was written talking about two and a half, three years ago. So there's newer information, you know, outside of this book, beyond this book. Uh, anyway, um, so this is the uh, second, second installment, I guess we can call it, right, of the same uh, chapter. So just go ahead and start reading. <coughs> this is uh, chapter four, The Mark and the Worldwide Plan. It says, uh, the plan to merge the sovereign nations of the globe under a one world government is frequently referred to and referenced as the new world order, which pretty much is not a new world order. It's an old world order because it's, it's a plan that they've had since, since the beginning, since uh, there were nations on the planet Earth. Um, when you go back during the Tower of Babel, that was the, the main reason why the Lord confounded the languages because they were trying to come together as, as a a one world establishment, you know? It says, this conspiracy of global governance is not a theory, but the actual platform and agenda of the 13 elite banking families that make up the Illuminati and run the planet. And that's who it is, you know? Now people are starting to, to uh, um, wake up to the different, um, to, excuse me, to the different um, uh, families, the 500 fortune families, that are running the uh, world behind the scenes. But back then, it was, a, it was a mystery. People had no clue or no idea, you know, of who these people were. You know, I mean, they've heard of the Rockefellers and stuff, but they really didn't know about their uh, uh, global plans and, you know, and the plans of the other nations. That's why um, this guy, uh, David Rockefeller, made that uh, uh, statement, you know, or that quote, you know, that he said that people have been, um, that people have been, um, uh, uh, accusing him and his family or his family of, of, of looking for world dominance or something to that effect or one the one world order or one world government. He said, if that's the charge, I stand accused. You, you have some? Yeah, I got a scripture for you. Um, Second Thessalonians, beginning at the uh, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, remember ye not, remember ye not that when I was wi yet with you, I told you of these things. That's, that's the Apostle Paul speaking. And now ye know, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Right? Because you, you, you mentioned something about a mystery. Yep. Right. This is what the Apostle Paul said. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. He's speaking to the Israelites in uh, Thessalonica. Uh, these were Israelite foreigners, Gentiles, if you will, who became Israelites. Um, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And he's talking about the so-called white man. So now we're in that time where he's being revealed. He's being revealed f to be the devil, man through the knowledge that we're bringing out, through the truth, the different videos. For And this backs up what Apostle uh, Elder Ramnab just said. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So even back then, Esau was doing his wickedness as what? As the Romans. Okay, first they started with the Greeks, then the Romans. As a matter of fact, in the Apocrypha, it tells you when the Greeks came into power, wickedness multiplied in the earth. So Esau is definitely the mystery of iniquity. Why is he a mystery? Because not too many people know that he's actually the devil. All right? That the Most High created him uh, pursuant to Proverbs 16 chapter. I thought heaven. Barack Obama was the devil. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Pursuant to Proverbs the 16 chapter, the heavenly father, Yahweh, actually created this man to be the devil, the so-called white man. And a lot of people don't understand that, neither do they know that. That's why he's the mystery of iniquity. Or at least one of the reasons why he's the mystery of iniquity, building on what Apostle Elder Ramlap said. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, 
Only he who now letteth will let, which is the heavenly father, Yahweh, because he controls everything. And now he's given that control unto his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Uh, even Yahweh Shai said, all power is now given unto me. He said that right after his uh, resurrection. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So that's what we're waiting for, brothers. You know, you brothers and the few sisters out there that, l that listen, that watch us, we're waiting for this so-called white man to be taken out of the way, meaning his rulership. Reading on, it says, and then shall the wicked be revealed. And we're in that time now. This devil is being revealed on all levels, okay? The GMO and the foods, all right, that's revealing him. The chemtrails in the skies, that's revealing him. Uh, what else is he doing? That's, that's wicked. The GMOs, the chemtrails, the trees that he's cutting down. They got something called deforestation, cutting down the trees, which we need the trees to breathe. The trees produce oxygen. So on every level, this devil is being revealed and, he's be, and he's, his power is being brought down. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, which the spirit of his mouth is this word which is taught by the prophets, which goes back to Great Millstone, GMS, Great Millstone. Like Elder Apostle Tar said, GMS is, we're the guys. I concur, man. We're the guys, man. Them other camps, they're bullshit, man. Them other groups are just bullshit. Let's call it, let's call it as it is. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and that's why they want to get us off the internet, because them devils are being consumed. <laughs> they're getting mad. They're getting upset. You know, they're trying to demonize us. You know, because they're being consumed, man. They're doing it because they're being consumed by the word. Wait a minute, we ain't pulling out gu guns on them. We ain't pulling out the UWAP on them, right? We ain't breaking out the UWAP, busting out the UWAP. That's the UWAP right there, the spiritual UWAP, man. And if you don't know what the UWAP is, Google it, all right? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the... <laughs> <laughs> and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's talking about the missiles and the chariots. All right? That's it on that. That's it on that. Con. I got something right quick. Now, you had mentioned a new world, right? Now, the new world, when you really go back and think about the new world, you have to think about the old world. Now, the new world came about during the time of... Uh, uh, Cristobal Colon. So you have to go on that, to that history and what he did, right? It says this is discovery of the new world and the end of the old, all right? It says pre preliminary thought. It says American textbooks often carry the history of Europe up into the Renaissance. You got to look up the word Renaissance. What was Renaissance all about? If you may, you can look that up, Renaissance and then plunge into the age of discovery. Oh, that's another w phrase right there. Age of dis discovery. And exploration as a preliminary to the study of United States. That's why the United States is so important in that conversation of the new world. When you bring up the new world, you have to men mention the United, United States or America, all right? Uh, United States history. As a result, we are much more aware of the effect of the discovery of the New World, which is America, as the Europeans conceived it upon the Americas, than the effect that the opening up of a new lands, new lands, because we, we came into the new lands too, and upon Europe, if we were more aware of the changes that the discoveries caused, caused, we might be willing to concede that these discoveries were a basic factor in the end of the Middle Ages. So basically, that's, uh, the, the old world was of one age. The new world is of the new age. And that new world began um, when during the time of Cristobal Colon, you know him as a Christopher Columbus, uh, Queen, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, King Ferdinand, Queen Isabella, uh, Spain, 
when you think about those names, you think about Spain, you think about the Moors, all right? All right, this is, um, this is a Renaissance European history. Uh, this is on Encyclopedia Britannica. It says, Renaissance, literally rebirth. The, pe the period in European civilization immediately following the Middle Ages and conventionally held to have been characterized by a surge of interest in classical scholarship and values. The Renaissance also witnessed the discovery and exploration of new continents. And that's what, that was, what was happening, which they weren't new continents. They were old continents. And, and there were people <coughs> that have come to this side of the world <coughs> already prior to Cristobal Colon uh, uh, setting on his, on his uh, so-called first voyage. <coughs> you know, you had the, the, um, the Chinese that had came over here in the 1400s, early 1400s. Uh, you had, uh, and before that, you had the uh, Vikings that had come over to this side of the world uh, where they, one of the uh, places that was called Newfoundland, you know, and they, had came, they, they navigated to this side of the world, going all the way back in the history during the time of the Phoenicians, which, was the which were the Canaanites, they were already uh, uh, um, uh, experts in the sea, you know, in the different uh, navigations of the seas. Yeah, I put in the word age of discovery, right? And it says the age of discovery is an informal and loosely defined European historical period from the 15th century, meaning the 1400s, right, to the 1800s. I'm sorry, the, the 14, 1400s, late 1400s, to the 1800s or the, or the 18th century, uh, marking the time in which extensive overseas, that's why you got to go back to Chris, Christopher Columbus, expo exploration emerged as a powerful factor in European culture and globalization. European culture and globalization. Because basically the American way is nothing but the culture of Europe being brought over here. That's all it is. Somebody get me uh, Revelation 20, verse 1. And we're going to read, we probably read that whole chapter, which is not that long anyway. Yeah, this, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And in and this, this, come, this verse right here, this is dealing with, with the bottomless pit represents Europe because you have what's known as pits of land. You know, when you when you go into the Apocrypha, it speaks about the Most High having his eye on on particular pit of land, which was uh, J Palestine, Jerusalem, Israel, that that land there. It says and the reason why it's a bottomless pit is because it had a lack of mineral resources, you know, so that so when you go into the European history, people in Europe had to go to different uh, to the Middle East, mainly to the Middle East, India and, and those regions to get spices, to get certain uh, um, uh, of vegetation and certain things to bring into Europe because they had a lack of mineral resources with, which they, where they couldn't grow certain uh, 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 things, you know? It says, um, and, and that key, uh, it says, and a great chain in his hand, and that great chain represented slavery because from the period beginning around 180 uh, to about 193 B.C., uh, all the way up to 325 B.C., that's when uh, Constantine uh, 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 declared so-called Christianity as, as, a, as a religion of, of the empire, you know. From that point, for a period of a thousand years, this devil was, was not able to, to uh, lie to the people because the Most High had put a seal. He, he pretty much he put him in prison uh, so he couldn't deceive the nations, you know. It says... And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, these are all uh, names uh, um, that describe the so-called white man. Because this particular dragon is not talking about the actual devil. And it says that old serpent because it goes back to who? To, the, to Cain. Uh, and it goes back to the, actual, uh, uh, to the serpent that was in the Garden of Eden, which was an actual man. You know, so it, it, it's given reference that this same spirit that was in... In, in the Garden of Eden and Cain and Esau is all the way up and up until this very day. That same spirit is working in the, in the children of Satan, which is Esau, 
You know, and right now, two thirds of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, you fall under that same category. You're devils. Mis mystery of iniquity. That's it. That, so it was a mystery. But the thing about it is, every time a certain particular amount of prophecies come by and, 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 and the ages change, the mysteries are, are revealed and be, they come clearer and clearer. And th that's, a, that's a heavy title, man. Mystery of iniquity. I mean, Con. he can't do right. <laughs> <laughs> He's the mystery of iniquity. His, yeah. his job is to create iniquity, create wickedness. You got Jake's looking for him to do right. You really can't get mad at him if you, you can't understand get him. Because right. he's set up. All he is is a, um, a, all he is is a robot that the Most High made and the Most High program, programmed him to be the devil. That's all he is. The real demons out there are you Jake's. Yeah. Because you were, you were set up to be righteous. You, you would call the righteous, and you're doing wickedness. So there's something, there's a glitch in the matrix here. Yeah, I looked up the word iniquity <laughs> from the mystery of iniquity. Uh, the Greek is anomia, and it says the condition of without law. Mm. Meaning, lawlessness. yeah, lawlessness. Meaning he, he has his so-called law, but he don't even keep that. Right. He breaks it as he goes. Yep. And he certainly breaks the Heavenly Father's law. Yep. So he's a lawless bastard. <laughs> because ignorant of it, because of violating it. And yeah, we're laughing, you know, because you, know, you get a joy out of laughing at this fucking devil. And I'm talking about the so-called white man, if you don't know. Uh, contempt and violation of law. Iniquity, wickedness. Hey, that's his, that's his job, man. You know, that's that's was, that was what he was created for. The most I created him to be. Proverbs right. 16 and 4. Yep. Yeah, that's what the Lord said. Uh, what if the Lord willing to show his power, make his power known, endure with much long, with much long suffering the mystery of iniquity? So I'm sorry, not the mystery of iniquity, the uh, vessels of wrath fitted, fitted to destruction. for the destruction. So why is Israel trying to look for this man to do right? You know why? Because they're ignorant. That's why the scriptures say, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. They don't have the knowledge that this so-called white man's the devil. He's the mystery of iniquity. And he can't do right. Yeah. And all he does is, is w all the works that he does, he shows forth that he's the devil. You know, but the, the Lord got that blocker on you. You're not going to see it. Uh, this is uh, verse 3, uh, Rev uh, Revelation 20 and 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit. And that's where everything took place in, 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 in Europe. You know, that was that bottomless pit. That's where he was shut up. That's why, for a period of time, Jake was ruling all throughout that region. You know, you had uh, some Arabs and uh, Hamites, different people that were ruling, but the main people that were ruling that controlled things was Jake back then. And during that time period, Esau was nowhere. He was around, but he, it was like he didn't even exist because he wasn't able to, to uh, spin that web and, and be the wicked that, that he is. You know, until that time frame or that, 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 uh, that sentence was was uh, was up it said um and it says and set us uh, i'm sorry and cast him into the bottom of his pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and that's the reason why during the uh, so-called or during the renaissance that when, it, when esau started coming back into power they were able to do that why because their sentence was up now it was time for the deception. And what's the very first thing they did it, during the uh, Renaissance? They started going around and painting over all the dark images of, of Europe. And every, every, anywhere they found them, they started painting them white. Yeah, I put in the word Mark of the Beast in Google, right?